Hello, I'm interviewing Dr. and Mrs. Robert Henry Johnson. For the second time, I interviewed Dr. Johnson and Mrs. Johnson two years ago, and Robert Henry is the oldest practicing dentist in the United States, not just in Texas, but in the United States. And he practices in Brownwood, Texas, which was my hometown. Robert Henry, how, what, what does a week look like for you and your practice? Well, we... How many days a week? We work do you five work? days a week and take off Wednesday afternoon and Friday afternoon, so we're ready to work four days a week. Do you play golf on Wednesday afternoon and Friday afternoon? Uh, yes, normally, yeah. Days you're not playing golf, you go out to your ranch and work your yeah, cows. Yeah, well, we go out to the ranch every afternoon after work. Not so bad. Then we had to sell uh, 190 pair of cows and calves, so I don't have but about 50 left. And you got some goats, don't you? They got 500 sheep. Oh my gosh. Well, we talked about a lot of things two years ago. Today I want to ask a couple more questions that may especially be interesting to young dentists starting out. What are the big changes you've seen well, in dentistry and how long have you been practicing now? I graduated in 56 and at 56 they didn't know what air was and we had just a belt on the pulley that runs your handpiece about 400 RPMs where now the air will be 400,000 RPMs. And you get an old number eight burr or number six carbide bird that vibrates your eyeballs. Well, think we had to cut a tooth down in your eyeballs and it's smoking and dust is flying and we didn't use water. And I mean, it was so such a transition today it's so wonderful compared to what it was. When did uh, air rotor hand pieces come out? Well, I was in the service a year. The Navy always gets stuff a year before the Air Force, and they got the hand pieces in 56. In 57, we got them. So that's 57. First, 57 in the Air Force. So for, what else What else has changed, big changes in dentistry since you've been in? So 56 to now, how many years is that, 60? 67 years. 67 years. You're about to get the hang of it, huh? Well, there have been so many transitions and so many changes. Everything is so much more efficient and better than what us old boys did back in the olden days. Things have changed. Implants have come on, taken over. Everybody, all you're reading, everything you pick up, so implant, implant, implant. It's true. I had trouble, and as I told before, with two people that were patient of mine that had some of the first implants done. And uh, in about a year and a half, they swelled up, and they had to take them out. One was in Lubbock, one was in Dallas. Well, after a year of healing, she wanted more implants. So they put some more in. Dr. Robert Walker put them in, who was one of the best surgeons in Harvey Texas. R.B. Walker at, and, at Parkland. Yeah. And, and there he was running Parkland. And uh, he put the implants in. In a year and a half, she swelled up. Well, she smoked, but at that time, we didn't know if you smoke, it's going to screw up the implant. So you better not smoke if you're on the implant. <laughs> That's true. You know, I don't put in implants on anybody that smokes. Oh, really? No, I'm just no. saying. But, but, well, because it's like so, well, they lost their teeth from smoking, and if they, if they smoke, they'll lose the implants. But we didn't know that at the start. If they don't smoke and they take care of them, my experience has been implants may be the most predictable procedure in dentistry. Yeah. So oh, what I, else has changed? Implants, belt, well, uh, air hand piece? I told him, I mean, I do all the jails at Comanche and Brownwood, and they have meth mass, mouths where the, the teeth are gone, but the roots are there, and you have to luxate, or if you, I got this new surgery burr, I was telling him the long surgery burr with a little head on it, and you go around that thing where you can luxate, or maybe get a forcer of a on the tooth to get it out. So, I mean, there have been so many new improvements and everything that we've got that uh, doesn't compare. Is better. Oh, it's so much better. What was your main training from? When I went into the service, you get out of dental school and you know nothing. You just barely, I had one boy in the service with us in Pennsylvania that never taken out a tooth and got his right. dental license. Never had scratched at one tooth. Really? So, I mean, but the service, you didn't learn, you butchered those poor boys up because you don't know what you're doing, but we had a, a colonel that was smart enough to get us out of a mess that we got into. And so I'm saying the real training in dentistry I got in the service for two years. So you'd recommend that? To, if you had to recommend anything to a young dentist getting out of school. Well, unless you're going in with somebody that's a, 
heck of a dentist and it can get you out of the mess that you're going to get into because you're going to get in some good messes. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Because you have no training in dental school about financial, how you set up your practice, how you do this. You don't know nothing. You know, that's interesting because when I got out of dental school, that's counting college and dental school, I'd never been in a business class. No. I didn't know anything about no. business. I was at the mercy of my accountant when I got out because I didn't know anything about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you take all those other courses. So if you, is there anything, Pat, you or Robert Henry would change if knowing what you know now, would you do something differently? Would you have gone into a different specialty? Would you have taken a different path? Anything different or you enjoyed the whole ride? I don't think so. I think we, we've chosen the right way to now, go. Now, Pat was the Baylor homecoming queen, and I've always thought this was interesting. During the Korean War in the United States, they had this poll of all these young women, and Pat was voted girl the boys would most like to come home to. Is that not right? That's correct. Yeah. She had 40,000 letters she had to answer back to the boys and all the people at Baylor. They set up a bunch to help her. The school did to return the letters. There's a little office for me there at Baylor. Oh, to respond? Uh, for, for answering letters, but a lot of the letters were from parents that had lost their children or didn't know where they were and they were really really touching so what was it about robert henry did you just feel sorry for him or what what is this that magnetic I, person i'm a hell of a salesman <laughs> I, it's because he was a little bit different you know i always like to talk to people about investments because nobody wants to get to 65 or 70 when i hear patients say i'm living off social security i think oh my gosh because if you read about social security it was never intended for people to live off of it. You need a financial time. advisor if you don't have any sense about money, and yeah. generally most dentists don't have any sense about money to start with. Right. Now, after you're there a while, you pretty well learn something, but to start with, you better get your financial advisor to tell you how to invest your money. That's my personal feeling. I mean, I know how to invest my money now as good as the financial advisor, but. They didn't back then. When you're younger, you don't know these things. You put a bunch of your money into land, right? Yeah. I had, well, I got a couple of policies paid off the other day, or a few months back. And I said, Bart, my son's insurance and, and uh, investments, stock market, all that stuff. He does all that investing for people. And I said, they sent me my money back for my life insurance policy. And I said, uh, he said, Daddy, nobody lives to be 90. So that's why you got your money back. Pat, have you got anything that you would suggest from having been in the practice like Sharon has from the get-go? Oh, I people... don't know. You get used to knowing their patients, too. You really do, don't you? And uh, some of them are like our family. Yeah. And then Robert was very good at, at having people come out home for lunch. If they came from out of town and he'd call at the last minute and say, Pat, I'm bringing so-and-so in for lunch. <laughs> so be ready for all of those kinds of surprises. It really is the relationships, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what. I sat in a chair and I hurt this hip for two weeks and nearly went nuts because I wasn't working. You, you broke a hip Fox so you had friends, to stay home for two Fox weeks. Fox News is about all I knew. <laughs> Look at them wide open with Fox News. but. If you're not active, now I have, all my friends are dead but two in my class. And they sat at the computer and didn't do golf, didn't do anything. And if you stay in that chair, you're going to die. So what is the key? I mean, number one, will you ever retire? Or you just go no, down to A lot dirt? of them have that study that I can see good. And I, well, I love my patients. They've been coming in here here 50 years. Real loyal help, too. Yeah. Uh, those girls are really, really special, aren't they? Oh, man, yeah. Can't do it without your staff. So you don't think you'll, you probably won't ever retire. I love my patients. It's not work when you do something you love. You and Pat are both 92. And Sharon and I were talking about that last night after we went to dinner. Y'all are both 
sharp as a tack. What is the key to that? Because to the me, key is the Lord's been good to you because I see those with dementia they bring in and they don't even know where they are. Right. And I said, Lord, it could be me, but the Lord didn't choose to do that to us. So you haven't done anything special other than you said yeah. fried food and vodka. Yeah. Two shots, not six. How you decided you wanted to be a oh, dentist? Well, and I grew up with nothing. We went to town on Saturday. And uh, when I got 10, we moved in. We didn't have electricity or water. And when we got to town, I, we lived with my grandparents for a year. And uh, this guy that was a dentist there was my Boy Scout leader, and he was a big active person in the church. And he had a, a bunch of land out there. And I thought, well, that looks pretty good. I now, believe what town I was, was this? T.C. Graves at Gothway, Texas. But, I mean, he had a bunch of land out there and looked very successful. I thought, we ain't got nothing. <laughs> and I thought, well, that sounds like a good profession way to go, so that's why I, I decided to do it. And what was Dr. Elton Knox when he one of your... Yeah, well, Elton Knox, well, Dr. Knox came to Baylor every year and demonstrated the gold foils. And consequently, uh, he had a big house, three-store house. Well, I mean, three, three garage and hell, we didn't know what a garage was, which was poor. <laughs> and I mean, a big rock house. and. You go inside, and I couldn't kick a football high. This was in Dallas? No, this is in Coleman, Texas. Coleman, okay. But he practiced in Dallas. So he did excellent girl work. I mean, that's just when they did three-quarter crowns. Or everything was gold. And uh, he had come up in dental school and teach us one week a year, the seniors, to do gold falls. And so... Uh, Tapping those things in. I remember Tapping that. it. And, I remember that. But as old boy said, you had one on the state board, you had to do a go fall. And that's the last go fall that ever touched my hands. Yeah. They came up with silicon after that. But I mean, we had it, but well, they wouldn't let you use it. But that's what we used. We didn't do big old falls. No. So those are the two guys that really impacted you to go to dental school. Those are the two guys that did. i tell you what Steve does is very exciting because what can be done in dentistry today that couldn't be done 30 years ago. I mean, to have a fixed <laughs> appliance and not have teeth. Yeah. I mean. It's amazing. I yeah. Mean, this is such a fabulous time to but be But if you pick dentistry. up a magazine, they all they've got is implants. Yeah. Had to raise the bone, had to put in bone, had to do this, had to do that. Yeah. And if I was going to stay in it, I'd go through that procedure, but I'd just let you worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Johnson and Mrs. Johnson are 92 years old, and Dr. Johnson is the oldest practicing dentist in the United States. Thank you, Pat and Dr. Robert Henry Johnson, for making the trip to Waco, Texas, and sharing the second episode of your fantastic life story. Dr. Johnson continues to practice four days a week and play golf three days a week. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time.